This tutorial shows you how to calculate the minimum required sample size for the paired samples t-test with SPSS itself. First go to Analyze, Power Analysis, Means, Paired Samples t-test. Since you have to calculate the minimum required sample size in advance, you have to select Sample Size from the drop-down menu next to Estimate. That should already be selected by default. The first input parameter you need is the single power value, or simply power. Power equals 1 minus the better error probability. Better error is the type 2 error. In short, this means falsely retaining the null hypothesis. 95% power is typical, meaning you have a 5% type 2 error probability. In some research fields, 0.8 is used here. This means you automatically accept a type 2 error of up to 20%. If you have power lower than 0.95, this usually calls for a reasonable justification. The second input parameter is concerned with the effect size you are investigating. You can either go through A, hypothesized values, or B, the effect size, Cohen's D. Specifying the hypothesized values means you have a rough idea of the mean difference between measurements 1 and 2 and its standard deviation, or the means and standard deviation for measurements 1 and 2 respectively. Since it is good practice to report effect sizes in scientific studies, you usually already have an effect size from a comparable or preliminary study, which you can enter here, Cohen's D. Let's assume an effect size of 0.5. If you have no comparable studies, use research field specific thresholds instead. Keep in mind though that you need to be able to justify your assumptions somehow. The third input parameter requires you to specify whether you are conducting a one-tailed or two-tailed paired sample t-test. Two-tailed means you cannot tell in advance which of the two measurements has the larger mean. If you do however, select one-tailed. The fourth and final input parameter is the alpha error probability, which is the probability of committing a type 1 error. In short, this is the probability of wrongly rejecting the null hypothesis. 5% is the typical convention. 1% is a bit more restrictive. A value above 5% should be avoided though. Finally hit OK to see the minimum number of observations needed to detect the presumed statistical effect with the predefined type 1 error probability and power. As a rule of thumb, a smaller effect size and a larger power require more observations than the other way around.